The Graph House is a passion-driven project created for the love of graffiti and the community that graffiti represents. Graph House is the first 100% submission-based graffiti zine by writers for writers. If you want to be included in a future zine, or if you even want to support Graph House, be sure to check out their Instagram and website. Of course, the link's at the top of the description or at the top of the comments below, or just simply go to graphhouse.com. Thank you so much to Graph House for sponsoring this video. I highly suggest you guys go check it out, and if you grab anything on the website be sure to use the discount code UFO for 15% off. They have also just started doing a monthly sticker subscription at 20% off. They also have new marker and sticker bundles for you to go check out and possibly buy. Visit graphhouse.com. Are you a beginner graffiti writer? Well, you come to the right video, because me and John Grimm over from the Artist Block are gonna be telling you some of the best markers and supplies to use. So number one, alcohol-based markers. I think a really good alcohol-based marker is going to be the Prismacolor, right? That's like pretty much the standard that everybody goes for. And not only is it one of the cheaper ones on the market, but it's it's a really high quality marker. You really can do everything you need to do with something like a Prismacolor. Then, of course, you have like the Lamborghini of markers out there, the Copic markers or Copic markers, which if you ask me, they're way too expensive and the quality difference between those and Prismas is not so much to the point where I feel the price is necessary. Another great alternative is also the Windsor & Newton alcohol-based markers. Those are pretty decent. They're a little bit more expensive than the Prismacolor. Once again, I don't think the price really justifies the quality difference, but you don't feel like spending all the cash on Copics, then the Windsor & Newtons aren't a bad choice. Moving on to number two, the best markers for graffiti tagging. Now for a good reliable tag marker, I struggled with this one a little bit because there's a couple that I used to use back when I did get up that I, I really enjoyed. I really just loved those markers. And one of those that I really enjoyed was the Crink K60. The malleable actual container of the marker itself lets you squeeze it in order to get some really satisfying drips. And I always felt like the ink inside of there was at the perfect consistency to give you nice controllable drips. Now I will say, for those guys who are less experienced, do not take this to a brick wall. I might have let my friend borrow my marker a very long time ago and you know he, he may have come back with my marker with, you, with no <laughs> with no nib at the end. A rough surface like wood or something of the sort will rip your nib right out of the marker. Not every tool is made for every surface and as long as you understand that you'll be perfectly fine. Use this on smoother surfaces and you'll get some beautiful tags out of it. A marker I would suggest the MTN Street Dabber but the 10 millimeter one. Not the really fat one there's two types but I highly suggest getting the smaller one because the Street Dabber versatility allows for it to be used with any type of technique or application and it's got a solvent base it provides fast drying permanent results you can make the most out of the drips a bunch of different colors to choose from as well which are all very satisfying to use another marker i really enjoyed back in the day was the cream k71 and it's a thinner nib it's not like you know this really broad kind of marker but it's it's a pretty nice marker gives you some really satisfying tags and i always felt like it glided right across surfaces beautifully a nice felt tip nib that has a little bit of flex Flexibility to it, so once you break it in and you kind of get that thing a little softened up, it just works so well. It, it's it really is a nice, reliable, consistent marker. Now the marker is a little bit on the smaller side as far as the nib is concerned. So for those guys who like those real fat tags with your markers, this may not be the option for you. But if you like the nibs that are a little bit on the skinnier side, this is a great marker. However, for those you guys who like catching some real fat tags, I loved, I loved the Molotov burner. That thing was top notch, and man, was it a messy marker. <laughs> this thing. I can't tell you the amount of times this is like dripped inside my pocket. It caused an absolute mess, but as much of a mess as it caused in my pocket, it caused on walls as well. And even, even when you would swing that thing around and you'd get like the splash that would inevitably come out. Oh my goodness. What a juicy, juicy nib on this thing. I, what, what, I mean, by far one of my favorite markers. And it also has that nice chisel tip, which lets you get some very angular tags, which I know a lot of people really enjoy. Next suggestion. I, I got to do it as an honorable mention. Now, I'll be honest, I don't like this marker at all whatsoever, but I used to work at a graffiti store and we, I mean, people loved them. People used to buy these things all the time and I could never understand why. So I gotta put it on this list and say the Sakura Solid Paint Marker. I never really felt like crayons were all that satisfying and that's essentially what this thing is. It's a glorified crayon. They're cheap, they're affordable, and they get the job done. So if you're looking for something that won't break the bank, this is something that, you know, you can delve into. But you know what is a marker that's really affordable, cheap, and 
and it's amazing. It's just one of those old reliable tag markers. You know, it's one of those things that everybody picks up at one point and everybody loves. There's pretty much nothing to gripe about with this. And that is the good old Pentel marker. You know, the paint marker that's nice, compact, simple. It's got a, one of those felt tip nibs that once again, once you break in, it feels real nice and satisfying. It's what you'd come to expect. There's nothing really special here. It doesn't have any fancy bells and whistles. It's just a reliable marker, which at the end of the day, that's something we all can get used to. For a marker recommendation from me, I'd highly suggest the Magic Ink Marker and choose any of the colors you want, but I'd highly suggest the black. And the reason why I suggest these markers is because they're really cheap, they're really small and compact, you can hide them in your pocket, and they have a nice chisel tip. Granted, they do buff pretty easily, that's the only real downfall of it, but it's one of my favorite markers. But they're in no way, shape, or form water-based or chalk-based or anything like that. It's a type of ink. Now, another great reliable marker is the Grog Squeeze Marker. As the name suggests, you can squeeze the thing and it'll give you more, more ink, more paint out of your actual marker itself. And it'll provide you with some of the smoothest tags you'll take. On top of that, as if all that wasn't enough, it comes in a wide variety of colors, so you can pick what you enjoy most and kind of rock with that. Granted, a lot of markers come with a lot of different colors, but this one comes out of the box with some fancy stuff. Some metallic colors, some really pastel colors that pop off of walls, or some vibrant, more neon kind of colors like a bright, bright yellow. Moving on to spray paint. In all honesty, you can do well with some pretty cheap and affordable paint. But if you're looking for the more typical premium kind of cans out there, then I recommend Flame Blue. Nice, affordable, pretty good quality. It's what you'd come to expect. It's probably something that you would use in order to catch a few tags or do a nice piece. It's pretty versatile in that sense. Pretty standard overall. On the same note, you can take it up a notch higher if you'd like and grab some Montana Gold. They are a little expensive. I mean, a little expensive is putting it lightly, but they are pretty high quality and I love the Montana Gold can. So if you can afford them, great. But if you can't, don't don't worry about it too much. There's a lot of other products out there that are pretty much just as good. Now, if you'd rather save a little bit of money and still get some pretty good quality, go for Dang Paint. It's not bad stuff right there, and it's got comparable prices. I think it might even be cheaper than Flame. Don't quote me on that one. Not 100% sure. It's probably going to depend on the retailer and where you are as far as shipping is concerned, but Dang Paint is pretty good stuff. In all honesty, though, you can feel comfortable getting pretty much any premium brand of spray paint. I'm not going to go ahead and say names, but I have some friends that work at these companies and they've told me that a lot of these brands are the same paint just different wrapper because they get their paint manufactured in the same facility that can't be said for all of the brands but it certainly is the case for some of them and lastly for John Grimm he's gonna lead us out with some of the best sketchbooks to use for the purposes of practice you can pretty much use anything you'll find the cheapest option will do just well even some printer paper will do you great however if you're starting to get more detailed with your pieces and you really want to delve into coloring and blending and all that stuff then you might get annoyed with some of the bleeding your markers will do. If you want some thicker paper, something that's not going to bleed as much, and something that will hold your ink a lot more, allowing you to do a lot more layering, then pick up some watercolor paper. I personally really like Canson's watercolor, but test out different books. You might enjoy a different watercolor sketchbook. Those are my recommendations as far as supplies for artists to go ahead and pick up, but let me and UFO know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. What do you guys recommend? UFO, thank you very much for having me on, man. It's always a pleasure working with you. And if you haven't already subscribed to this dude, you got to do it. He's come out with some sick stuff. And he is, honestly, a really chill guy behind the scenes. One of my favorite people to work with. If you haven't already heard of him, go ahead and check out his channel. He knows pretty much everything to do with graffiti. For the people that want to learn how to actually do graffiti, how to do wild style, how to do tags, how to actually do stuff in terms of style, he's the man to go to. He is the actual graffiti dude. Thank you very much for this collaboration, man. You're a legend. I appreciate you. And I appreciate all of you guys. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and have a good one.